and I'm a woman. Remember those three words. I'm fat, I'm black, and I'm a woman. That's what you see when you first look at me. Fat, black, a woman. But there's so much more to me than I am. So many layers behind my skin. A thousand and one thoughts behind my eyes. I'm fat, I'm black, and I'm a woman. I also suffer with depression and nine years ago tried to commit suicide by walking in front of a moving car. I was drowning in thoughts of self-loathing, hate, pain, and I wanted to do anything to escape that, even if it meant dying. Luckily, a friend of mine called me back and saved my life. Let's go forward, backwards, a few years to June 2016. I was devastated by the growing amount of black deaths at the hands of police in America. And so became one of the main organizers of the Black Lives Matter struggle of March. This march intensified my passion for art, social justice, and community cohesion. And so I decided to start up a, a leading social enterprise called Armel, which is based in Sheffield. Armel explores cultural identity, black history, and what it means to be a person of color today. We do this through events, we do this through festivals, um, and we also do this through seminars at the university. What Armel does is encourage safe space for people. It encourages the platforms for people who want to explore who they are as a person, explore who they are as a cultural identity. So let's talk about that. I'm fat, I'm black, and I'm a woman. It always intrigues me when people say, oh, you're not fat, you're beautiful. And I'm like, wait, hold up. Did I say I was ugly? No. I said I was fat. See, I can't just simply be fat. I have to actively be working towards losing weight, or at the very least, say that I'm losing weight. And usually the people say, oh, but why can't you lose weight? Is it because you don't know how to cook? Is it because you suffer with depression? Is it because you don't like yourself? But in the same breath, they tell me that they care. They tell me that I am loved. But also, that I'm not married material at my size. The Western world revolves around the Eurocentric idea of beauty. And we're taught that to not fit in is wrong, it's awkward. And echoes of fat shame happens every day in our everyday lives. Feelings of um, sayings like, oh, I feel fat today, usually echoed by a white woman. I don't have that luxury of being able to say, I feel fat today as a feeling. I'm visibly fat, and my fat isn't in the right places, but it's presented to me in the hypersexualized body of the plus size body movement. No, my, I'm an apple, and my fat is all in the wrong places, or so it would seem. The Westernized standard of beauty marginalizes, it creates exclusionary spaces, it makes us feel inadequate. It makes us feel as though we're wrong. And if white people can't, if white women can't get into it, then how am I, as a black woman, able to? I'm fat, I'm black, and I'm a woman. Black history in schools, and it's not a compulsory subject. And when I was growing up, I was, a handful, I was one of a handful of kids in my school who was black. My friends were white, and my teachers were white, and the people that I would read in my storybooks were white. I remember there was one occasion, and I was in school, and I told my mum that we were learning about Florence Nightingale. And my mum was like, no, that can't happen. So she walked into one, and she did walk. She marched into my school classroom and said to my teacher, you have to teach them about Mary Seacole. Now, Mary Seacole is a black Jamaican, that was a black Jamaican nurse who worked in the Crimean War. Another occasion, we were at school book fair, and my mum, um, I wanted to read a book about um, wizards and magic, and my mum was like, no, you can't read that. She took it out of her hand, I was so upset, and then she gave me this book by Mallory Blackman. And at the time, I was really upset about it, and afterwards, now, I'm really grateful that she did, because Black Mallory Blackman is a black British writer. She was the previous children's laureate, and she has created so much space 
for representation in the books that we read. Did any, I want to see a hand up, show of hands. Did any of you learn about black Tudors at school or black Victorians? Put your hands up if you did. Not a single one of you. A one person? One person in our this room. See, black history is an honour in the high school curriculum. And it's something that we need to be taught. If you're a parent in here, or you're a teacher in here, or you're an educator, we need to be teaching this in schools because it's the real and honest history of what's happened. I didn't know that there were things like black kingdoms or black victories until I started on our started researching on the list. But the history in our schools and the history of Britain is whitewashed with the British triumph and brought the rule. The real story of black Britain is omitted, misrepresented, and distorted. I'm fat, I'm black, and I'm a woman. When we talk about women, we think of birth, life, beauty. But I think that we should also talk about the universe. The universe that gives us life. The universe always regenerates and rebirths. Last summer, I was really interested in exploring the experience of black women and black beauty. So I put a call out on social media um, asking black women to come take part in an exhibition. The exhibition was to be part of Black History Month and showcased a uh, local art gallery. I was overwhelmed to understand with the amount of response that I had back from many women, black women across the city, and even had a person come up from Liverpool to be a part of our exhibition. The exhibition was shown on ITV, um, and it was also shown on BBC News. And we had an astounding amount of response back from it, because never had before has an exhibition of black women been shown in Sheffield at all. If you go to the art galleries in Sheffield, you don't see barely see representation, black representation. And so what we did was create space for black women to be represented in our city. Alongside the exhibition, I also interviewed local black women about what they thought black and British and being a woman means to them. Some of the responses I got back were very interesting. I had one person who said that if her nose was thinner, she would feel more beautiful. And then another person said that being a black woman meant that being apologetically me. Last year, I also took part in um, a podcast called The Naked Podcast by um, Jenna Kapp of BBC Radio Sheffield. Now, for those of you who don't know what The Naked Podcast is, um, it is literally a naked podcast. So you're interviewed naked on a sofa. <laughs> And the experience itself is bizarre. Jenny Cat turned up at my flat door, knocks on the door, and they come in and we have a cup of tea. As you can see on the pictures behind me, you have a cup of tea. And they start interviewing you about your self esteem, your, like, your weight, your, just in general about you. And to begin with, it was really uncomfortable and really awkward. And then afterwards, I kind of got used to it. Like, we were just three women sat on the sofa, there's no barriers between us talking about our shared experience of what it means to be a woman. And it was quite liberating. I'm fat, I'm black, and I'm a woman. So let's be curious about the world around us, the universe that gives us life, because we are all the universe, and each, each one of us is equal in our eyes. I'm fat, I'm black, and I'm a woman.